I've just graduated from pastor to reverend. And then sometimes I graduate to many other names. Just leave those hands and just bless God's name. Just give him thanks. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you glory. Our Father and our God, we honor you. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Come on, somebody leave the saints and bless him. going to be provided not coming your heart had provided and we receive by faith in the name of Jesus hallelujah amen, amen. thank you you can have a seat praise God I am happy to be back for the second service and I want to give God thanks for all of our lives but again I want to observe all protocols and say big thank you to uh, General Overseer, Pastor Lumine Emmanuel, to Pastor Abraham, the woman of God, Pastor Dick Hates, not here, and to all our pastors, you know, uh, Pastor, all our men of God that are here, I respect and salute all of us, and I think it's a massive privilege for me to come in here and to speak. Praise the Lord. Um, yes, amen. Praise God. Don't have all the time in the world, and um, I... I I, um, in advance, announce that I will exceed the time. <laughs> a little bit. Might just be like two or three minutes or five minutes. So it's not going to be more than that. Praise God. Amen. Today I want to talk about financial stewardship. And I want you to listen very carefully. I want you to listen I want you to listen. I want you to listen. And I think it's very, very appropriate at this time of real birth. I've known that real birth has been going on for decades. And there's a time for you to understand what I want to say right now, for you to have a shift in your mind. But I want to start with a testimony of someone in our church, he doesn't like to give loads of testimony, Paul. Someone in our church that God has blessed with a few houses and still buying more. And God has helped him, he still remained humble. But I want to share something that he did, which he shared recently in a men's meeting. The first time that he wanted to buy a house, he had gathered about uh, I think it was 10,000 pounds for a deposit. And not trying to raise money in church, or maybe we were trying to do a building, I can't remember. 
no one that remember dates really. And this brother decided that instead of buying his house, are you following me? I'm not, I don't give testimonies a lot. Some of us should know that. You can't remember me a lot that I come here and give you testimonies, all right? And then this brother decided that instead of buying his own house, he was going to give that money and then discuss with his wife and then just give the entire money to church. Praise God. And that's it. Everything fell in place. Now, 10,000 doesn't mean much to him again. I think that's a bit of money if you convert it to Naira. I think. But then, I am someone that I don't carelessly talk about money. I am quite reserved. Now, I play a lot, but when it comes to money, and I'm quite conservative, I don't like to talk a lot about money. But I know the truth about money. And I understand that those who give don't lack. It's the truth. Sometimes people would ask questions like, people would come to our church, and then they would wonder that, where are the people doing the stuff that we do? Like I was saying in the morning that we just had a small extension in our church, a small extension because, of course, everything just eats money. And it was about 150,000 pounds. And it was very easy. I'll say the next phrase, that we didn't raise money for it. We just did it. But the question you say is this. I'm going somewhere today. You've got to follow me. Is that, ow. And I have concluded, now some of you are going to get angry now. I have concluded that if God blesses Lee Carlo Shandaya, if God blesses five people in this church, five, five people will comfortably, without feeling any stress in their pocket, pay the 50 million. Comfortably. You don't need everybody here to give that kind of money. And it's a massive privilege that you are part of it. That you're not trying to help God to do anything. Because if he's hungry, the Bible says the cattle upon the thousand hills belong to him. He'll just go there and kill it. God needs us to give, but he doesn't need the money. Every time you give to God, you bless you. The need for God for you to give is the need that he has to be to bless you. It's not because he's in need or he's hungry. For he's already the one who owns all things. And if he needs more, he'll make more. Are you following what I'm saying? I want you to have a different mindset when it comes to giving. You know, for instance, people talk a lot, because some of us here might say, you know, but I pay my tithe, I do that. Let me submit to you very quickly that one of the least things you can ever do as a Christian is to keep 90 and give God 10. It's one of the most embarrassing, insulting deals that Christians have with God. That you know what? You bless me with everything, but I'm going to keep 90. And you are good enough to have 10. I'm not sure will know this. And that's why I don't talk about title a lot. Because I believe it's a massive insult. And somebody will brag everywhere, argue everywhere, whether they should pay 10% or not. I don't get into that argument. It's just so ridiculous to me. And then, now, 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 you still have to convince somebody to do that. Because we have to, because some people don't even have a clue what they're doing. And if you're listening to me right now, you are still asking questions about 10%. God help you.
Because some of us, our children's school fees is about 60% of what we earn. Don't you know your problem? That all your life you're paying school fees, but you still have to pay. Hello? I can give lots of examples. All I'm saying today is this. I just want your mindset to change when it comes to giving to God. So let me, let me say a few things. I can just, just probably just talk for the rest of the minute and just forget about this. But let me show you one or two scriptures. Financial stewardship is extremely important. And who is a steward? And not many of us are trained. So that's why it's easy for me in Calvary. You go to some places you want to say anything, you have to spend two hours to explain the word. But I know you get it. So who is a steward? A steward is someone, stewardship is the management of another person's property. Stewardship, follow me closely. Stewardship is the management of another person's property. The management. And that's why in the Bible, our, our, our example of a steward is the guy called Joseph who managed the estate of Potiphar. And the Bible said Potiphar had no knowledge of anything that he had except his wife. So Joseph had control, absolute power. Now, I used the word power deliberately and had absolute authority to manage the property of Potiphar. So you see, a steward is someone who is entrusted with the, 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 the authority, who is entrusted, 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 entrusted with the authority to manage another person's property. And listen, this is the issue now. With a steward, the owner invests trust in the steward. You know, God believes in you more than you believe in yourself. And that's why he puts money in your hand. God is hoping that you will come up to the standard of trust that he has for you. You see, listen to this. God never looks at any one of us less than he thinks of us and he's made us. You see, God is not going to get around mistrusting you and then not give you money. I'm, I'm going to push some buttons here. Do you wonder why unbelievers have money? Do you wonder why people who don't serve God have money? I'm a realist, all right? You know, and I was, I talk facts and figures. Anybody here, you know unbelievers. They don't serve God, they don't believe in God, but they have money. Do like this. Do like this. They are near your house. You even got angry with them when you were coming to church. Because when you were trying to get a bus, the guy parked his car. You know what it is? Because God does this. God gives us, expecting us to manage. And what you don't understand is it. It is not to give that is the issue. It is to account for. So, the steward, listen to this, has right and everything over what he had. So, in financial stewardship, you do have everything. And you have right over the money in your wallet. Tell somebody, I have right over my purse. But what you cannot control is the fact that the owner has the right to request you to account for it. Let me tell you this. So what happened is this. With stewardship, the owner expects you to make decisions. Hey! And it doesn't interfere with your decisions. The owner has an over, over, he has an over, he has his own general expectation. It must be found that a servant, a steward must be found faithful. That's it. But it's not going to monitor every day of your life. Oh, come on. I want some of us to get this. It's not, when you get this, you know what's going to happen? 
Do you know what's going to happen? It's going to be me, and it's not going to be railroad, and you will give something that is more than what you gave in, gave in railroad. Yeah. The owner doesn't run around to monitor you. He doesn't say, Joseph, have you done that yesterday? No, it's not going to do that. No, 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 no. That's bad leadership. It's not going to run after you. It's not. God, God, God doesn't micromanage. He gives you, he leaves you. And that's why he gave people talent and he walked away. And he said, occupy till I come. God, listen to this. God doesn't micromanage. When he gives, he trusts. You know why? Because he has given according to their several ability. Uh, so God trusts you before he gives it to you. And so he expects of you to manifest the grace that he has given to you to deliver the result that he has faith that you are able to deliver. And so he doesn't need to hang around to check every tiny little bit of what you do in church. Leaves you to it. That's why people get it wrong. Because God leaves them to it, they forget that they're not the owner. As a steward, there will come a time that you will account for everything that the owner has placed in your care. That is pretty scary. And you do whatever you like to do with your money. I'm, 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 I'm serious. You do whatever you like. Just think, it doesn't matter. I don't have to give. Do whatever you like. But you know what's going to happen? You're going to account for it. And so if you are smart, you begin to change the way you deal with the talents and the money that he has given to you so that when the time for accounting comes, you'll be fine. And some of you, you know what's going to happen. God will continue to bless you. You know, you know Pastor Mide was saying that. He said that I give sparingly. And then he, they, he didn't say they that they didn't give. You know why? And he didn't say they that add small and give small. He said they that give sparingly. It's the function of the will of the giver to do whatever they liked with what has been given to them. But God is the owner, and the owner is going to ask you. Let me read this scripture. I like this scripture. If you understand this, you see, that, that your hand that is tight. That if you want to open your hand, we need a chisel and armor. Break your bones and everything destroyed just to have it open. And by the time it's opening, it's already destroyed you'll be delivered from that tightness. You see down there? You process money as if you are processing heaven. You calculate, measure, weigh, think, dwell, have sleepless nights, roll on your bed. <sighs> this robot will don't come. Robot is not a punishment. It is a blessing. Because some of you, your art is already part, 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 part. What's that word? Thank you. You keep the English, I keep the rhema. <laughs> you, you're already going like that, going like that, going like that. No, chill out. Just touch somebody, tell the person, relax. Take it easy. First Chronicles 29 verse 14. I'll read 14 and 16. But who am I? For who are my people that we should be able to offer willingly as this? Who am I? And who are my people? This is David. Who are my people that we should be able. Everybody, look at your neighbor, tell the person, you are able. But are you willing? He says that we should be able to offer so willingly as this. For Listen to this. This is where we're going. For all things come from you 
and of your own we have given to you. You do not have capacity to give to God. Where would you get it from? You, listen, 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 you didn't get it. You do not have your own inherent capacity to give to God. It, it, it is impossible. For you have to have it to give it. But you are not Jairi. You are not El Shaddai. For you to have it to give it has to be that he has given. And so, to even think that you are giving to God of your own power is an insult. Because you don't even have except that he gives. He said, what do you have that you have not been given? If you have been given, why do you behave as if you did not receive it? Listen to this. There's nobody here under the sound of my voice who has their own inherent capacity to give to God. All that we bring, we only bring from what he has given All that we have ever needed, his hands had provided. I like that song. For all things come from you, and of your own we have given to you. Of your own we have given to you in verse 16. Oh Lord our God, all this abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name is from your hand and all is your own all that we have brought to give to you and we are prepared and we are rejoicing says all is from your hand look at your neighbor tell the person your shirt is from his hand <laughs> Tell the person that that's the way they brag about is <laughs> from his hand. Tell the person that car you don't want to carry people in is from his hands. Tell the person that Coca Cola you can't buy for somebody is from his hand. <laughs> is from his hand. The offering you're going to give today, he gave you. You were just bringing back a fraction of what he gave you. If he didn't give you, you would have an empty pocket. That's what the meaning is. You're a steward. You don't have anything. It's not yours. He gave you to manage and from time to time, he expects you to be smart. And to just at least respect the guy who gave it to you. Some of us are like children. You know how children think? You buy a packet of crisps and then you take one out and give it to them. And then you say, can I have it? I say, no. You are children with crisps. Say, no, no, I don't want it. Person that bought a packet gave you one. Once one, you are grumbling. Tell your neighbor, tell the person, when will you stop grumbling? Say it loud, don't be afraid of them. In Yoruba language, they say when they send us message, we are afraid of the sender, not the person that want to deliver to. Tell the person, when will you stop grumbling? Of his own, the concept of financial stewardship suggests that God will commit a Kabo Shaddai heart. God will commit finances into your hands, expecting you to manage. That's the meaning of financial stewardship. God will commit his own wealth. Anybody, lift up your hands and say, I want God's money. God will, now, so you didn't say it well. Say, I want God's money. I want God's wealth. I want God's abundance. 
For that's just what she means. God will commit money into your hands. Expecting you to be a steward. In other words, manage it appropriately. And remember that it is expected of you as a steward to remain faithful. The number one quality of a steward is faithfulness. Remaining, remaining steadfast with the one who has given it to you. Let me ask you one question. It sounds funny, but I'm still going to ask anyway. Who gave you what you have? Who gave you what you have? What is the source of your money? When you know, listen, you are always first and foremost accountable to the person who owns what you have. You are first and foremost accountable to the person who owns what you have. Oh, yeah, I'll explain. If you have a driver that drives your car, who are they accountable to? Himself? No, the owner of the car. And that's why some of us are so, we are, we are, we are tough. If the car crashes, the driver will just leave it at the door and disappear. Hello? Is accountable. But listen to this. I'm going somewhere. I asked the question. I said, who owned what you have? You said God. But now you see, I'm not going to take the answer. Because it is not the answer that matters. It's the practice. If you come before God, then you are walking as if you own it. Does that make sense? You see, if God owns it, you're committed and accountable to the owner. We've agreed. So if now I am first and foremost accountable to myself, that means I am behaving as if I own it. And you are on the path of mammon. Deuteronomy 8.18, you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he. Who gives you power to get wealth? Why did you give? Why did he give you power to get wealth? It's not so that you can buy cars and build houses. The purpose of its money is for his kingdom. Are we going to buy houses? I didn't have time. If not, I will teach you that separate. That you see. You get a place where you become a good manager of God's money that you understand that investment is a must so that you can increase the capacity of what he has given to the same end of establishing his kingdom. Does that make sense? It's money your idol. Ask your neighbor, it's money your idol. They are going to say no anyway, but just ask. Money in the Bible, you see this. Money, everybody say money. Call it with another intonation. Money, money, money. <laughs> when you read your Bible, it's amazing that throughout the Bible, two things were equal to God. Baal and Mammon. Those are the two things put on the same pedestal with God. It's massive. For instance, it says, choose you this day who you will serve, God or Baal. And then here, choose you this day who you will serve, God or Mammon. Mammon is so powerful, it's like a choice between God and Satan. No one, Matthew 6, 24, no one can save two masters. Called money a master. For either he will hate one and love the other, or else he'll be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So he's calling mammon master. Hello? Mammon master. God master. Who is your master? First Timothy 6 2. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. I know you have been taught well. You know money is not evil. But the love of it. Let me teach you this principle. It's a very simple principle. Listen carefully to this. 
Something that doesn't have life cannot be evil. All right? Just get that principle clear now. Something that doesn't have life cannot be evil. In other words, Facebook cannot be evil. Instagram cannot be evil. TikTok cannot be evil. They don't have life. They are abstract. They are inanimate. This microphone cannot be evil. You see, it is the life behind them that can become evil. That's why money is not evil, but the love of money. You see, you have introduced life to it. The person who is dealing with the money. Hello? Look at your neighbor. Tell the person money is not evil, but the love of money is the root of all evil. Love of money is avarice, A-V-A-R-I-C. It means extreme greed for wealth or material gain. Excessive, insatiable desire for wealth or gain. That's what is called avarice. That is the love of money. Insatiable. You can't stop it. And it's not to the end of the kingdom of God. It's for self. What are you doing with your money? What are you doing with your money? Let me begin to bring it together. I'm just jumping my notes. It's better. Let me just say a few things. Have you ever asked this question? Why is giving to church a big deal? Why? What's the name of that boy that just said on social media that he wanted the money and people gave him lots of money? You know him. Tell me his name. Eh? <laughs> That's what you are doing in your spare time. Then in your heart, you should be thinking that you, Pastor, how did you know? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Ask for money and he had loads. How many millions? I can't remember. And you, you know the answer. Give me the answer. How much? 250? 250 million. And he didn't need it. It was just plain. It was just in fact, Pastor Lumidal Emmanuel is just playing. I just want some people here to just give me one, one million. All of you here will start praying. That God, what has happened to our pastor? Pastor, did you used to be like that? When has he started begging for money? That's what you would do. It has to be with God for people to grumble. And that's how you know that it's satanic when you don't give to God. It's satanic because the devil doesn't need to fight it if it's not for his kingdom. And that's why it's hard. It's when it's church that you process it. Nobody is angry with that guy. But he's it, just a nice guy. And I want to put it to you that many people who gave money were Christians who would struggle to probably give in church. Because there's a spirit behind giving. And when it has to do with God, the devil fights you. See all this rubbish about eh, the church is just making money. It's not true. I Listen to this. Listen carefully to this. If somebody is deceiving you that all the money is in the church, it's a lie. You know why it's a lie? I am from a Muslim background. When I was young, I walked up to my father. I said, Daddy, why are we the only Christian in this our family? Pastor, let me know my family. We are we're proper Muslims, imams, my uncles. Do you understand? My uncle, it's the Balogun of our town. It, we, that's how we are. When I was young, I walked up to my dad. I said, Daddy, this Christianity is suffering. All my cousins, they have money. Pastor, do you know they, they have money. I mean money. I just don't want to mention it. Some of my cousins are chairman of banks. I'm, I'm serious. Money, why? What, what have we done wrong? And my father looked at me, just laughed. That do you think money is everything? I was not satisfied, but at least. What am I trying to say? Listen carefully to this. Don't be deceived. And don't let the devil change your mind and make you think that, you know, in church, they just have money. And money. And then they want your money to do this. Listen to this. Don't deceive yourself. The richest people on earth are not Christians. When are we going to stop that devil from lying to us and stopping us from generating and delivering wealth for the kingdom that we belong to? 
And instead, be grumbling and murmuring about giving every day of our lives. What is the big deal? Why can't the church look more beautiful than the best estate or the best uh, cinema in the country? What's wrong with that? Are we not also human beings? What's wrong? Even if I'm not, what is wrong? You know what's wrong? Because this is a God's business and the devil is fighting it. You know what's wrong? That's why you can go to the shop with your friend to Domino's and buy your friend a pizza for, I don't know how much they say pizza here, let's say 5,000 naira and you buy your friend a pizza for 5,000 naira and you, the same person, you're going to come to church on Sunday and you're going to give God 100 naira. You got to ask yourself, why? Is it because you don't have? That's a lie. Uh, of course, I'm not trivializing people who don't have. But I'm saying that there are people here that if your friend tells you, you know, carry me out for lunch, you will do it and spend 2,000 naira. But in your offering, it's going to be 100. That is what you might call it, Coach you last one. No be ordinary eye. Look at your friend. Tell the person, no be ordinary eye. <laughs> you can, you fit follow your friend, give him 100, 1,000 naira. Now, na God. Then you calculate. Put the money inside the inner pocket of your trouser. <laughs> Some of my friends used to do it in those days in Ajegun. Their, 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 their money is inside the inner so that when you want to pray for fear, as they are struggling to pay it, you will have paid I know some of you here, you do it. <laughs> Repent and be converted. That the time of refreshing, finish the scripture, might come from the Lord. Why is it church? Because it's spiritual. And what you want to do today is you want to say there is no power of hell that will stop you from serving your God. That your mindset about money will change you will know that God, and when you have this kind of mindset, money flows to you. Money flows to you. If you're ready to be a true steward. Because of time. Ask yourself, why do I struggle? It's not your money. Tell your friend, it's not your money. You're going to give account. If he didn't give you, you are not having it. He said, but I only have 5,000. I know. But let's do, what I'm saying is, if he didn't give you the 5,000, you will have zero. That, is that not true? It's my sweat. Go and ask people who have special condition that they can't sweat. They can't sweat. They are unsweatable. <laughs> they were, it's my sweat. Okay, it's your sweat. It's your sweat. What happens if that sweat goes? The sweat there means your power. Means your strength. Is the one that gives you power to make wealth to establish his covenant. I want to submit. I know some of you are asking, what about unbelievers who have money? <laughs> I'll teach you another day but listen to this there's something God does God can bless people who don't serve him you know why? because God is very smart when it comes to justice so that when the time comes they will be without excuse God is not lacking never we that were Christian, we have the privilege to plan the future and to determine what happens hereafter. Because the things that he has committed to us, we understand the use of it. Don't ever envy unbelievers. David said, I was almost carried away. And I was thinking, why do they have more? He said, God told him, hey, come, 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 come. let me slap your friend. Tell the person, relax. I said, Touch, okay, touch the person. Tell the person, relax. Don't slap them all. <laughs> relax. 
God told David, he said, no, 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 no. He said, their end. You don't want to see it. They are like sharp before the winds. It's a privilege. Respect what God has given to you. Respect it. No matter how small, start from it. If he didn't give it, you won't have it. Whether it's a gift, you say, but I'm not working. It's just my uncle that gave me money. If God didn't want your uncle to give you money, he won't give you. Let's start laughing. To even start, can't they add you now? Just stand. <laughs> stand, stand, stand. I know some of us are still writing. Keep right, finish writing and stand. Look at some friend. Tell the person it's just money. No, 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 no. Tell the person it's just money. Now, think about it. Listen carefully to this. You know what's happening in Russia and Ukraine? Russia and Ukraine? The first people to run away from Ukraine were the rich ones. Because they had SUVs to go to neighboring countries. Hello? They could move. They went on. They moved. When they moved, they carried their money. Abby? No, they didn't. The money is locked down. Go, and read, go, go. Things are hard. You can't carry all your money. Okay, they carry money. They carry their houses. When it really comes to it, you will understand that your life is more important. And once you understand that, you know that there is nothing that you give that measures to the life that he has given. Listen, 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 listen. Even if you get iPhone 50, if you just say I bought somewhere now, I'm telling you the truth, you will not remember the iPhone. It's when you are safe, you now say, ah, where are the iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Just to prove to you that your life is more important than iPhone. But you see, God gave you life. You, you now use that life to calculate him. And now find it grievous in your heart to put your hands in your pocket and bring from what you don't have but what he has given to you. That is not your own. So, I mean, let me ask your neighbor, why did he add? No, ask your neighbor, why did he add? Ask your neighbor, you go die, carry him, go evil. No, this is, what I'm sharing with you is serious. It's serious, I'm telling you, it, it's serious. It's just that it's no time. I, I will share some things with you. These are serious matters. You only have what you have for the kingdom. It's small. Okay. But from that, it's when it comes to giving that money suddenly becomes big. If somebody dies in your family now, I know, I don't want small cow. You want big cow, fat one. Make people shop, make them shop well. But when it's a church, we must have. It's satanic. It's devil. It's devil. I want you to think about it. I'm finished preaching. Now. That's all you can come. I'm telling you, it's devil. I'm, I'm telling you, it's devil. You will overcome that devil. You will change the way you give. Amen. This robot, may we not be limited by 50 million. May somebody here become angry with Satan. And say enough it's is enough. enough. I give to the God who gave me. Because I am a genuine steward. Somebody look at your friend and laugh. 